see each and every one of you with us uh, tonight. Uh, I'm not Tom Brady, this isn't the Super Bowl, amen, but this is the most, I believe that we're going to have a better time tonight, in God's yes. name. So we're so glad to have you, uh, and those of you that are joining or watching on Facebook, we're glad uh, that you are with us as well. But I pray that you've had a wonderful day. Uh, the Lord has blessed us, man. It's been a beautiful day outside. We've had a great day in the Lord this morning, Amen. and we're excited to be back in the house again tonight. So I hope that you're glad to be here with us as well. As we get started, let me make a few announcements. Um, offering, if you have tithes and offerings tonight, you know on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights at the end of service, you can come and uh, drop your tithes and offerings into the plate, offering plates at the end of service. I want to say this as I always do. Thank you for your faithfulness uh, to, to tithe and to be faithful with your offerings. Amen. You bless our church and we're grateful for it. Amen. Thank you for being obedient to God's word. Uh, also, I want to share with you clothing. Ladies, don't, don't forget that in the kitchen, uh, there is all kinds of ladies' clothing. They're casual. There's they from casual up to, it looked like me proms. They can so up. Uh, if you would like any of that, there's shoes in there, there's purses in there, there's scarves in there. So uh, there, there's a little bit of everything, amen. So if you would like to look at that, it's completely free. And if some of this stuff is from, if some of it's brand new, still got tags on it. So if you would like to look at it, please look at it. If Mom Faith wish she wanted to donate it to the church, and anybody that would like to, to have it or anybody that could use it or wear it, please take it. Um, it's going to stay here till next Sunday. I'm going to give it one more week to next Sunday, and then, then it's going to be gone. So uh, if you'd like to have any of, of that stuff, please check it out after service. Next Sunday night, next Sunday night, they will be having an afterglow uh, for, the, for the youth group. Uh, it'll be February the 14th, 2021. It'll be following our evening service. This is sixth grade uh, through uh, high school. And then also for the college age students, they're going to be having some fun and fellowship and games following service next Sunday night. Amen. Uh, also, I'd like to encourage you and invite you to come on Wednesday nights to be with us. We're back on a normal schedule. Uh, we'll be having church Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Come to be with us. Our, our Bible study will continue on the Beatitudes Wednesday night. Uh, three kids. Is back going on Wednesday night. Ignite Youth will be upstairs. So come and be with us. We've got a class for, for all ages, and we would love to have you for our midweek services. Amen. We're, we're glad for you to be here tonight. Let's go uh, to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to ask that. I'm going to ask him to pray for us this evening as we get started tonight. Before I do, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you for one for our first prayer. Jack and myself, we were sick with COVID. We want to thank, thank each one of you for the prayers. And I believe God heard it, each yes. one of us. Yes. And we went through it pretty good compared to a lot of people. I want to thank God for touching us. Amen. And I want to thank God for seven in the church. Amen. people out there, one around here, 
be around that person. Right. Amen. You know, but many times we don't have that type of love for God. Many times we just come to God when we need something, when we want something. God, I need you to heal me of this. I need you to meet this deal. I need this. I need that. I need this. But do we ever say, Lord, I just want you? Yes. I just want you.
to the valley. Amen. Amen. You're going to praise your way up to the mountain, God. Praise the Lord. We're so glad to see each and every one of you here again tonight with us. Uh, it's always an honor and a privilege uh, to get to share God's Word with you. And it's just an honor and privilege, whether it's a Sunday morning, a Sunday night, or a Wednesday night. It's always an honor and a privilege to stand on this stage and share God's Word. So we're glad that you are here. Thank you for being with us uh, tonight. And uh, I always forget to mention this. Um, I'm just, I'm, unless it's in front of me, I don't mention it. I completely forget. Uh, but just reminding you, on Sunday mornings at 9.30, there is an adult Sunday school class going on in the kitchen. Amen. Uh, they've got a Sunday school book that they, they teach out of. Daddy leads that class. That's the the only Sunday school class that we've had going at 9.30, there's a Sunday school class in the kitchen. If you would like to come to be a part of that. Also, on Sunday evenings at 5 p.m., Sister Naomi uh, leads a study group uh, on Sunday evenings. Uh, on right now, they're working on the book of Revelation, the end time. They're doing that at 5 p.m. down this first hallway, uh, the second door on the left. So, like you'd be a part of these other small groups that we have going on, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Come and be with us on Wednesday night as we uh, are continuing on, on the attitude and also the youth group uh, and the uh, street kids are uh, getting back going on Wednesday nights as well. But we're so glad to see you this evening. If you have your Bible, when you take them and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17 is where we're going to tonight. 1 Samuel chapter 17 is where we are going uh, back to tonight. Amen. I'm Appreciate you being here this morning. Continue to pray for us as we're going to be studying and working on our that new series on Sunday morning. And I pray that the Lord, I just pray the Lord will bless you uh, through those teachings on marriage and, and relationships. But uh, tonight, we're going to go back to the story of David and Goliath. Uh, I preached on this last Sunday morning, and uh, I had planned to preach on it last Sunday night, but I just was not finished with what God was wanting to give me there. And, and so I'm going to go back to that tonight, and uh, I want to preach there from the story of David and Goliath. I have a little bit more that I feel like the Lord has showed me uh, there. Let me give you kind of a recap of what I preached last Sunday morning uh, on this particular topic. Amen. We talked uh, about how the Israel had been in a standoff for, for 40 days. In this particular day, we're going to read Israel and the Philistines had been in a standoff for 40 days. When young David comes there, and he just comes to visit his brothers and bring them supplies, uh, uh, when Zebo Goliath come up there and say, hey, come on and give me somebody to fight, and, and if I win, uh, y'all will be our servants, and if you win, we will be your servants, David responds by saying this, uh, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defies the armies of, of the living God? And when no one else would, not a soul out of the entire army of Israel would go down and face Goliath, David had the faith, David had the courage to face this giant. Let me remind you of a few things that I preached and I mentioned last Sunday morning uh, as we preached moving forward in the face of opposition. Number one was this, David stood in covenant, amen? David stood in covenant with God. He was on God's side, but Goliath wasn't, amen? I'm reminded of what Romans chapter 8, verse 31 says, What else shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us, amen? amen. David was in covenant with Almighty God, amen? David stood on the promises of God. 2 Corinthians 1 20 says, For all of the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. The land that Goliath was standing on, the very land that Goliath was standing on as he come out and he defied the armies of, of Israel, belonged to Israel. God Almighty had said, and we look back at the covenant in Genesis chapter 12 and Genesis chapter 17, God had deeded it unto the nation of Israel. He said, I'm giving it to you and your descendants forever. Therefore, David stood on the promise of the covenant, and he knew Goliath was as good as dead because God said, that's Israel's land. Amen. Yeah. 
The other thing that was pointed out was this. God, David stood with a pure heart. Amen. In the chapter before this story that we read in of David and Goliath in chapter 16, David was anointed as the next king of Israel. God chose him based on the condition of his heart. Amen. Do you remember that? Uh, God said to Samuel, I don't look at the outward appearance like you look, but I see the heart of a man, and he is the one. David did not only stand on God's promises, David did not only know that God was committed to him, David was committed to God. There's a lot of folks that want the benefits of God and the benefits of God's promises, but not the service unto God. David knew that God was committed unto him, but David also had a heart that was committed unto God. Can I tell you something? God is committed to you and I, but it's time that the church get committed unto him like David was. We read in first, uh, second, uh, Chronicles, the Bible says in chapter 16, For the eye of the Lord run to and fro through the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Amen. God showed himself strong in this story of David and Goliath, didn't he? He showed up and showed out yes, because he took that big old giant and laid him down on the ground with just a little old stone. Amen. Praise God. David stood in covenant. covenant. David stood on the promises of God. David stood with a pure heart. Amen. Now let's look at our main text for this evening in 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're going to read a little bit more uh, in this story. We're going to begin with verse 28. 1 Samuel chapter 17. And we'll begin with verse 28. Now Eli. His oldest brother, this is when David just got down there to the battlefield. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David, and he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, and for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him towards another and said the same thing, and these people answered him as the first ones did. Now when the words which David were spoken were reported unto Saul, he sent for him. Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. You've got a young teenage boy Speaking to a grown man, the king of Israel, and he says, Don't worry, king, I'm here to save the day. Amen. Amen. He says this. He said, I will go and fight the Philistine. Verse 33. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. Right now, I want us to go to verse 42. Skip over to 42. David finally makes it to the battlefield, or he's fixing to. And this is Goliath's reaction. And when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained him. For he was only a youth, he was ruddy, and he was good looking. So the Philistines said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Amen. Let's stop right there with the reading of God's word. Let's pray over it tonight. Father, we come before you tonight in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for your presence that we've already felt in this house. Lord, we want you more than anything else in here tonight, Lord. And now as I uh, break the bread of life, we thank you for the reading of this word, and I ask for your anointing to continue to rest upon me as I share this word that you have given. Open up our hearts to, to receive this seed, Lord. May we leave here differently than we would come. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody say it. Amen. amen and amen. As I was studying this particular text in which uh, over the last 10 years, I have preached on this uh, numerous times, whether it was from the platform or whether years ago it was up to a youth group. I have preached this story many times. You have heard this story, I'm sure, many times. And, 
But God showed me something, honestly, I had never seen before in this particular text. And God began to show me that David faced another enemy before he ever got to the battlefield. I want to say that again. David faced another enemy before he ever got to the battlefield. And it wasn't a physical giant, but it could be just as destructive and it could be just as powerful. Do you know what it was? I'm going to call it, it was criticism. I'm not talking about constructive criticism. I'm talking about the truth criticism that's defined by Webster as this, the act of passing severe judgment based on perceived faults and mistakes. So passing judgment on someone by just what you pursue. Come on. He faced criticism before he ever got to the battlefield. And I have never noticed this until last week, but before he physically fought Goliath, he was criticized three different times. That's right. He was criticized by his brother Elab. He was criticized by his leader, King Saul. And he was criticized by his opponent, Goliath, right. before the fire ever started. The Greek philosopher Aristotle said this. He said, there is only one way to avoid criticism. Do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. I don't know if I agree with Aristotle because if you do nothing and you say nothing and you are, you be nothing, uh, someone's going to criticize you for being lazy and out of day. Amen? The point is this. You will all, all face criticism. The fact of it is in the fact of life, somebody's going to pass judgment on us. Amen? They're going to look at us and presume something and pass a severe or a critical judgment on us. And so
or think, because you worry all the time about what somebody's going to say, about what somebody thinks, number one, you're going to be a miserable person. If you are constantly worried about your critics, you are going to constantly, you're going to be miserable. And the second thing it's going to do, it will hinder you from moving forward into your destiny. I thought about David here. David received all this negative criticism before he ever faced a light. He received all this negativity before he ever got to the battlefield. And I know about David. You know what? First of all, he could have allowed this criticism to discourage him. Right. He, he said, well, maybe, maybe this isn't such a great idea. Uh, no one else is doing it. Maybe, uh, maybe I should just give up too. No, if anything else, David was more determined by the time he got past Eli, the past time, 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 time he got past Saul, and when he makes it to the battlefield, and then he says, "You come to me with sticks, or who do you think you are, you little pathetic boy?" David was that more, much more determined by the criticism in which he proceeded. Don't let criticism from the world, folks, discourage you in his whole life. Amen. He could have allowed his critics to depress him, to depress him. He could have accepted what old Saul said of him. He could have accepted what the, uh, King Saul had to say about him. You can't. You can't. You can't. He could have accepted that where I'm just a weakling. I'm a nobody that can't do nothing and can't ever get nothing right. I can't. I can't. He could have put on the mentality of a critic. And I'm going to tell you something. Some of you here today say you're ten and you stay depressed because you're listening to the wrong moment. You hear what I said? You stay defeated and you stay depressed because you are listening to the wrong people yeah. that criticize you, say you can't, you won't ever be anything. You want to know who you are? Pick up this Bible and it'll tell you who you are and what you do and what I Critical and negative to you, but it's a whole different ball game 
when it's somebody that you love. Come on. Right. It's one thing for a stranger who you don't know from Adam to come up and say something uh, kind of hurtful to you and pass judgment on you, but it's another thing when it's family, when it's blood. Right. Amen. Amen. Family criticism will always hurt the most. Whether it be a spouse, whether it be a parent, or whether it be a child. Let me remind you of something. Jesus promised us that offenses would come. He promised that offenses would come. It is a guarantee that things are going to happen that will hurt us. But there will always, there will always be a critic. But it is your choice of whether you get offended. Amen. Yeah. It's your choice whether you can get offended or not. Blow up like a bullfrog. Amen. That's your choice. I want you to notice verses 28 and verse 30. Now he left his oldest brother when he heard, heard him speaking. David was asking questions about who's this old giant now? Who's this uncircumcised Philistine? Eli got angry with his brother. He said, Why'd you come down here? And with whom have you left those? Did you catch that where he said those few sheep? In other words, his brother was trying to be little and he, you know, he, thank you, Dean, he was responsible for a few little sheep that daddy left you with. He was being critical. He was trying to belittle him and put him down. Where are those few sheep that you left in the wilderness? And then he passes a judgment on him that I know your pride, that insolence of your heart. You come down here to see the battle. All you come down here to do, boy, is to be nosy. Come on. Come on. He didn't know that daddy had sent him down there. He just come down to be a delivery boy, amen? And just saw the light come out there, a shout, and he's like, well, who is this? And his brother jumps up all over him. I want you to notice, though, David's response. I want you to notice David's response. That where David says, excuse me. He said, David respond, uh, notice David's response. He said, what have I done? And then he turned from him, and David went on about his business. Look at 38. Then he turned from him towards another and said the same thing. He turned from his brother who just was critical and just said these things to uh, deliver him and put him down. He said, well, what do I do? He turned from him and went back to talking to the other people again. There will be times that people are going to say things about you. That's right. They're going to say things to you. And the best thing for you to do is just to roll on doing what you do. Can I say that? There are going to be times that people will say things hurtful or negative of you, critical of you, and there will be times that you just need to roll on with your business. Most criticism is not worth addressing. You need to write that down. Most criticism we receive from the world is not worth addressing. It is not worth your time. You know one of my favorite quotes by Winston Churchill? If you will never reach your destination, if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. There are some folks in this life I want to tell you, you just got to look over. Let me tell you why. Why do you need to just go on about your business when certain people criticize you? Why? Because most of the time it's a problem with them and not you. When people are critical and negative and they say something to tear you down, the reason you need to just turn from them and go on about your business and not let it slow you down is because often the problem is with them to begin with and not you. Let me prove to you what I'm saying. Why did Eli? The oldest brother lash out here in this text at David. Well, first of all, I believe Elab was jealous of David. I believe Elab, big brother, was jealous of a little brother. If you will remember, and we read in the text, that Elab was the oldest brother of eight. He was the oldest brother of the oldest son of Jesse. It was Elab in 1 Samuel chapter 16. It was Elab who Samuel thought God was going to choose to be king. The Bible says that Elab looked like a king. He looked, must have looked like a man. He had a little twinkle in his smile. And he looked like a leader from an eye perspective, from a man's perspective. 
perfected. And even the prophet Samuel said, well, this must be the king. And that's when God told him, I don't see like man sees. I judge the heart and he is. We know from 1 Samuel 16, Elab already had a heart problem. He already, his heart already was not right because God rejected him from choosing him and chose David. But not only that, Elab, the oldest brother, was there when Samuel the prophet anointed David, little brother, to be the king over all of Israel. I believe old Elab had some jealousy of little brother. I mentioned to you this morning from Luke chapter 6. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, what? Speaks. Amen. Our words reflect the condition of this heart. Now I believe that the words of Elab are a reflection of his jealousy uh, uh, towards his little brother. The second thing that I can reason that Elab, I believe, lashed out at David. Another reason that Elab lashed out at him, Elab called him prideful for daring to speak so boldly in faith. Listen carefully. When you boldly act in faith on God's promises, it will do one of two things. When you have bold faith, like David did in this text, it will do one of two things. It will inspire or it will offend. That's right. You hear what I said? When you have bold faith, as David did in this text, it will inspire others and stir their faith in God or either it's going to offend. Right. People are going to be offended by your faith. Now, they can even be insulted because you demonstrated faith in areas where they lack. Remember old Elab? He had been there in that standoff for 40 days. Over a month, Elab had been there. The oldest brother who looked like a king, had the muscles like a leader, had been sitting on his blessed assurance for 40 days while Goliath came out every morning and every night and defied the armies of, of the living God. Friend, he didn't have the faith, the courage, nor the gall to go down there and fight Goliath. Amen. And little brother comes down there, and he had the faith to do what he did not. You see where I'm coming from tonight? He had the faith to do what little brother, what little big brother did not do. Listen to me. People can get offended when you have the faith to do what they don't. Come on. Say that that bold faith that David displayed, it will either inspire folks, but it also can offend folks. He like criticized him. I believe in part of in jealousy. He criticized him because David had faith that he didn't have. He had the nerve. He had the courage. He had the faith to do what he would not do. And so for most criticism, you need to let it roll off your back because it's a problem with the other person and not you. Come on. Yeah. Number two, Saul criticized David. Brother criticized him. And then when David stands before king, the king criticized him. Look at verse 33. And Saul said to David, after David said, hey, I'll go fight. You are not able to go against that Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. King Saul told David, you can't fight him, you're just a youth. He, 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 he told him, you're, you're too young, and you're too inexperienced. From that, David proceeds to tell Saul, proceeds to tell Saul in verses 34 and 35 of how he had killed a lion and a bear with his own hand. Saul says, you can't. And David said, hold on just a minute. 
Let me tell you this story. And he tells him in verse 34, uh, it begins, But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went after it, I struck it, and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose again against me, I caught it by its beard and struck it, and I killed it. Do not read that and go, okay, and go on. Do you understand what David just said? He said, these beasts came, a lion and a bear. Some of you may have never seen a bear before, haven't you? Amen. Have you ever seen a lion before? Come on, it's where you say yes or no, baby. He said, this lion came one time and took away one of my lambs. And then later a bear came and took one away one of my lambs. And I hunted him down and I killed him. And when he rose up against me, I caught it by his beard. I struck it and I killed it. When I read that, you know what popped in my mind? I get this image, I don't know why, of Chuck Norris grabbing a bear by his head and punching him in the face and knocking him out. Amen. That's when I killed Chuck, Chuck, uh, Chuck Norris, amen. Delta Norris or uh, uh, Walker, Texas Ranger, amen. Knocking him out. David wasn't a win. David wasn't a good win. He might have been a young boy. But he was a man, amen. He was a warrior. He was experienced and more capable to handle the situation that Saul gave him credit for. And it was just not his strength, amen. But David, I believe, had the ability to read his opponent and to strategically uh, plan his attack. I don't think necessarily uh, David run up there and just grabbed up that bear or that lion as we might imagine in our mind. But I believe he was strategic about how he falls to that line and that bear. Amen. In other words, listen, David, David was strong, David was courageous, and David was smart. Yes, amen. You, you understand where I'm coming? David was strong. You grab a bear by the head, you struck, struck him and kill him, you feel a man in my book. You might tip my hat to you right now. Then you do it to a lion too, I tip it again, amen. He was strong. He was courageous. Some of y'all run from a kitty cat. Amen. Come on. I tell you, I'm poor. One time, I was coming on my neighbors where I live in Lake Park, Lake County, bulldogs. Oh, mean pit bulldogs. And I come home late one night and uh, had groceries. Y'all know how you, you can't make more than one trip from the car to the house. You got to get all the groceries in one trip, and I had lined up my arms with groceries just like that, and the lights on my truck had went out. It was pitch black in my, my backyard, and I made it my way to get to the door, and I finally get the key in the door, and all of a sudden, I hear this, and it sounded like it was right behind me. I literally almost busted the door that and hit in the house. I don't know if I'd be fighting any lion bears. <laughs> David was strong. David was courageous. David was smart. But don't miss this. Saul did not know that about David. That's right. Saul did not know that about David. He just looked at him, and from his appearance, he presumed that David was inexperienced and incapable of winning in this fight. And so he passed the judgment and he said, you can. That's right. Get this. People will criticize you. They will pass judgment on you when they don't know your whole story. Right. Come on now. When people don't know the whole story about you, they will pass judgment on you and criticize you and even say harsh things about you because they don't know the backstory. How many of you know we do that ourselves to people? Yeah. We will criticize somebody maybe for the clothes that they wear, but we don't know the struggle of where they come from. We may criticize a young child uh, for the way he's acting. 
Jackson, but we don't know right. because of the kind of home life that he has. Amen. We'll criticize somebody because they act a different than us. Come on. We don't know the whole story. Amen. Let me give you an example. I'm going to get this right. I'm going to share this story with you about, about something that happened to Daddy years ago. Many years ago, when Daddy was preaching, I remember him telling the story. Our, our his aunt Marvel was dying. And I believe he was going to work. And he had his work clothes on. I said he worked a public job in the job when he pastored for 25 years. Amen. And he, he was going to get ready to go to work. And then he got a call about <laughs> her, her dying. And so he goes up right there. And, you know, and he, he's in his work clothes or whatever. And he's there with the family. And he's, he's there later. A chaplain from the hospital comes in. And, and he, he tries to look through later and see. That's when the intensive care was over in the old building. And tried to look through the window there to see uh, his aunt Merle. And long story short, and all of it, this chaplain who really all he knew that he was a preacher, come up there to him and said, "You're the sorry preacher I ever seen." Am I right? What he said? Had a critical judgment on him, and pursued where he's there. This these clothes here, he's leaning around trying to get into the ICU room. That man walked up and said, you're the sorry preacher I ever seen. He judged him, and he didn't know the whole story. He didn't know that was his aunt that was in there dying. He didn't know he worked a public job and pastor a church for 25 years. Sometimes we will pass judgment on somebody, and we don't know the whole story. Saul told him, you can't do it. He judged him in that manner. You ain't able to. He didn't know the whole story. Right. Let me tell you something. In situations like that, let me tell you, in situations like that, you have got to know who you are. Amen. Yes, you have got to know who you are. Critics will say hurtful things to you without knowing your whole story. It is in those moments that you must know who you are and know yourself worth. Yes, it is in those moments when people will say hurtful things about you and they don't know you, you need to know who you are and then right. rise and know your self-worth. Amen. Amen. Saul made a snap judgment on David and said, you can't. David could have gotten discouraged right then. He, somebody in authority told me that I can't. Yet David remained confident in himself. Amen. Even after brothers criticized him, was harsh to him, even when King Saul, a man of authority that David at that time would have looked up to without any doubt, he said, you can't. David remained confident in himself and who he was and who God had called him to be. Amen. Amen. Listen to me. Never let a critic tell you who you are or what you can do. Come on. Never let critics in this old world and naysayers and the negative and the, those that be ready to be little, never let David remained confident in himself. You go back to that passage. He said, I went after it. I caught it by its beard. I killed it. He was confident in who he was. And he said to that old king, wait a minute. Wait a minute, king. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know the mountains that I've crossed to get here. You don't know the rivers that I've swam across. You don't know the pain that I've endured or the battles that I have been in. You don't know the lions, the tigers, and the bears that I have fought this fall. Amen. Never let somebody else tell you who you are. Amen. Number one, right here. Amen. This defines you, not the critics of the world. Amen. Not the critics of the world. He could have let that define him. He could have let that old chaplain that didn't know of let, let me just go on. Amen. <laughs> he didn't know what he was talking about. That's right. But he had to let this word define him. You can't let people who don't know the whole story define who you are. You've got to be confident in who you are and who Christ has called you to be. I'll take this a little bit further. I know I've got to hurry up. When, when criticized, stand firm in who God made you to be and who he called you to do. Who, who he called you and what he called you to do. 
In this story, old Saul said, all right, if you're going to fight, then we got to put on some armor. Come on. And Saul gave him his very own armor. Saul, the Bible says, he was taller than even the rest of the Israelites. He stood out here. He was a big guy. And they tried to put this armor that was made for Saul on the young David. And David said, this ain't going to work. I have not tried this stuff. That is not fit to me. I don't need it. You can't make me into what you want me to be. And I want you to listen how David went down to fight that giant. This is what he did. Then he took his staff in his hand. The staff of what? A shepherd. David was a shepherd. He had the shepherd's staff in his hand. He took it in his hand. Then as he's walking along, he chose five smooth stones from a book, a brook, and put it in his shepherd's bag and in his pouch, which he had. And it says, and then he had a sling in his hand, and, it, and he drew near to the Philistine. Saul tried to, and you need to do this, and you need to do that, and you need to put this on, and you need to get you a sword, and David said, no, I'm just going to do me. Amen. I'm going to do me. David fought Goliath in the same way he fought the lion and fought the bear. That's right. You can't be somebody else. That's right. Come on. You, you can't be somebody else. You look up to somebody and admire other people and everything, and, and it's good to have a people that you admire or you look up to, but can I tell you something? You can't be them. That's right. If, if two people are exactly the same, one of them is not necessary. Amen? Right. Be you, young people. Be you. Don't try to be like some, somebody else. Be who you are. And be thankful for who God made you to be. Amen. Don't try to be an imitator. Don't be an imitator of somebody else. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're going to face criticism. Be confident in who you are. Let me go to the last one. We'll close this one. Number three. Goliath criticized David. Psalm uh, verses 42 says, And when the Philistine looked uh, and, uh, up and saw David, he disdained him. For he was only a youth. He was rude. He was good looking. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? He disdained this young boy coming down there. There was nothing. You hear me? There was nothing in David that struck fear or respect into the heart of Goliath. Amen. Goliath disdained him as this little old puny boy came walking up to him. Goliath even felt insulted that they would see in David. Am I a dog that you would come to me with sticks? What did Goliath mean when he said that phrase, am I a dog that you would come to me with sticks? First of all, Goliath was insulted that they would send this puny little boy to do a man's job. Right. The second thing was this. He was really telling David, you're pathetic. Yeah. You're, you're pathetic. You little boy, you cute little boy's going to come to me with these sticks in your hand. you got a staff in one hand, and you got a slingshot in the other hand, and you think that I'm supposed to be afraid of you? You're pitiful. You're pathetic. That's what he was saying unto David as they were coming down. He was saying, that's just laughable. Just get this in your head, folks. You're talking about a man well over nine feet tall. The Philistine army behind him. Here comes little old David. Ain't nobody behind him. Because all of Israel scared to death. They're over there and their armor's clattering. They're, scared, they're shaking so much. And David alone is walking down into that valley to face this man. Don't you know that the, the Philistine army that was there behind the light uh, were just laughing and mocking David. Don't you know how people are doing? Oh, oh look, look here, Goliath. They, they sent a boy to, to fight you. Boy, you, you really into it now. Can't you see him? Can't you hear him mocking and criticizing him and laughing at him? Ridiculing him. And as David made his way down there, Goliath presumed that the battle was over before it began. What a junk he thought. You know what I thought about when I read that and I God began to deal with my heart? You know that's how the devil often looks at you and me. That's right. 
compared to him, you know what? Us compared to him, it's like a David and Goliath story. I want to remind you of something. Goliath was the result of fallen angels sleeping with the daughters of men. Did you know that? Genesis chapter 6, if you didn't know that, go and read it. Goliath, if I can put it so nicely, this freak of nature, right then, was the result of women, earthly women, sleeping with fallen angels. Genesis chapter 6. Goliath not only represented a physical enemy, but he represented a spiritual enemy. Amen? And when we stand up on our own against that old devil, amen, he laughs at us and they look at those puny little old people. Now they cannot take me on. You remember something. He is the accuser of the brethren tonight. Not all criticism comes from a man, and the devil knows how to work on our faults. Amen? The devil knows how to get on to our emotions. Praise God. He knows how to make us feel pathetic and defeated. As he whispers lies in the heart. Anybody ever been there before? Where that old devil beats you down with them old lies? He is the father of lies. He is the accuser of the brethren. And he does his best to defeat you and me as children of God. He do, does the best to lie to us and make us feel pathetic and laugh at us and say, oh, you can't do nothing. Amen. So praise God. But let me remind you what Brother David did. When God, Goliath criticized him, they turned it over to God. Amen? Yes, Amen? When the enemy comes against you and he makes you feel pathetic, pathetic child of God, I want to encourage you to turn it over to God. Because you are not on, you, excuse me, because you on your own cannot defeat that Amen. old devil. But I'm reminded that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. And praise God, he gives me victory through Jesus Christ. I am not a victim tonight, but I am a victor in Jesus Christ. I am not defeated, but I am a soldier in the Lord's army. And when the devil comes against me, he's coming against all of heaven tonight. Yeah. Romans chapter 8 says this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for you for sake, for you for, for your sake were killed all the day long. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors to the end of God. When that devil spews his lies in your ear, on, you remind him he's a defeated foe. Right. In Christ. When we face his spiritual enemies, I remind you, child of God, in Christ, we have complete victory. Be coming on to the music. I got to land this plane. <laughs> Listen, when David, you remember what I just said, in Christ, we have what? Complete victory. The devil wants to get you defeated. He wants to get you discouraged. He whispers in lies in there to make you feel pathetic and helpless and broken. But in Christ, we have complete victory. You know what? Go back to the story of old David and Goliath. When David was going down there to that battle, in that battle, he picked up, how many stones did he pick up? Five. Why did David pick up five stones? Did he think he was going to miss? And did he think, uh, you know, man, I ain't that great a shot, but I'm going to give it my best. Is that why he had doubt and he needed some extra ammunition, amen? No. That wasn't what it was. See, Goliath was a Philistine of Gath, the Bible says. Goliath was a Philistine of Gath. That's what they call him. Later, you read in 2 Samuel that there were four more giants that were called Philistines of Gath. In other words, Goliath had four brothers. And when David goes down there to stand off against Goliath, he was not going down there for partial victory. He was going down there for total victory. Amen. He said, I'm not going to that is symbolic. I'm not just going to kill you, but I'm going to kill your brother and everyone else in your family tree. What he said, I'm going to have complete victory over the enemy. You have complete victory over the enemy church.
Rejoice, child of right. God. Lift up your head. Woo. Greater is he that is in us than he Amen. that is in the world tonight. Thank you, Lord. We're going to face criticism. Right. You might as well get used to it. But praise God, we can stand through yeah. Jesus Christ. We can stand your feet. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Release it. 